Hey everyone, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Nicole Buckeye Stitcher. I'm here to do my November update. Um, I have stopped and started at the beginning of this, like the first five seconds, about eight times. So no matter what comes out of my mouth now, we're just going with it. Um, so let's get started. I have a number of things to talk about, some which are not stitch related. Um, well, I guess almost all but one are stitch related. Um, I'm going to show you the only thing I've worked on this month um, because it is focused on a finish time and we are down to the wire. So I'm gonna show you some stitching first and then do some non-stitching stuff. So actually, I take that back. I did work on two things. I worked on the ornament for uh, the Weasley's Floss Tube Ornament Exchange, but I didn't take a picture of it before I finished it, and I mailed that yesterday. So it was one of the sleds. Um, it had the initial of my recipient's first name. Um, I can't say that because he or she has not gotten that yet. Um, but hopefully um, that person will show my ornament in their videos once they receive it. So the only thing I have really worked on this month is Ebenezer's Christmas by Erica Michaels. This is my progress. So this is a gift for my sister. It was supposed to be a gift last year and I don't know why I thought starting it in November last year was gonna give me plenty of time to get done. So last night I worked on the wreath and every one, I don't know why that wreath is so stinking cute to me, I just think it's the cutest little thing ever. Um, the Cratchits appeared over Thanksgiving and I thought I'm definitely gonna have this thing done soon. Um, but I'm not there yet. So um, this is stitched on 32 count Legacy by Picture This Plus. This is a really good piece of Legacy. It's more of a brownish tone. Um, I ordered a piece in their sale, um, their Christmas sale, and I'll show you in this video. It has more of a greenish hue and I don't care for it as much. So. As much as I love Legacy, it's probably my favorite uh, fabric of theirs. I don't like the inconsistency of it, and I may have to go to something different. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with this sweatshirt today. Anyways, so here is, as far as I've gotten, my plan is to just keep stitching on this until I get it finished, because I was thinking I have until Christmas Day to finish this, because I'm not going to frame it. She's going to frame it, and I will help to pay for it. But my sister is going to her new in-laws this year for Christmas, which is in New Hampshire, and we live in Ohio. So I'm not going to see her this year for Christmas, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so anyways, I have to have it done. Well, I guess honestly I don't have to have it done before Christmas because I don't know how I feel about mailing this to her. So she has it to open before Christmas. I may just take it up to my parents and leave it at my mom's house. So I know for sure that it has arrived there safely. God forbid this thing get lost in the mail. But this third part is my favorite part. Um, and so I've said before that I want to stitch this for myself, but this is just my favorite part. So I may just stitch just that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But yes, it was worth all the madness over the... Um, color conversions. I think if I do it for myself, I probably would do more of a brighter red. Um, I'd change these to kind of suit the fabric and also suit my sister's taste, but they're perfect. Um, but I might go back to a brighter red. Okay, so there's that. And um, it literally came off the cue snaps right before I filmed this. So obviously I will iron it before I gift it. I was kind of bummed I didn't have it finished. I thought I was going to have it finished for this video. And as much as you can see almost all of it there, and I can take a picture of it to insert um, when I do get it finished. It's pretty fun to be able to hold up a finish on your video, so it's kind of bummed about that. And then the other thing that I did finish, I forgot to take a picture of, so blah. Okay, so I showed something stitchy. Let's talk about the non-stitchy stuff. In my last video, I mentioned that I was going on a mission trip to an exotic feline rescue center in Center Point, Illinois. That's what it's called, exotic feline rescue center. Um, I really didn't have any idea what this trip was going to be about. I kind of had a, I mean, obviously I knew we were going to help big cats with dental disease. I really didn't have any idea what the extent of it was. And I was quite blown away. Um, so what I typically do when I'm doing dentistry on small animals, dogs and cats, um, most of their disease is similar to what we get. Um, you know, some broken teeth, but mostly tartar, gingivitis, periodontal disease that requires cleaning, um, in as many cases as possible trying to save the teeth, but if the tooth can't be saved because it's loose or diseased or fractured or abscessed, it needs to come out. Um, and I've taken 
lots and lots of teeth out of animals and they can still eat. Every, the first thing everyone always says is, is my animal's gonna still be able to eat? Yes, your animal will still be able to eat because they've been eating with all that broken, painful, loose, rotted nastiness in their mouth. They will much happily, more happily eat without it. Um, so that's about all I do. Um, these big cats don't have that. They don't have tartar and gingivitis and they don't need to be cleaned. I was shocked at um, how clean these cats' teeth are. Um, and I mean, in some ways it makes sense. In, in my world, the bigger the animal, so a big dog has much healthier teeth, less tartar, less dental disease than small breed dogs. There's just something genetically about that. Um, and I saw a four-year-old Yorkshire Terrier, a Yorkie, once. Um, I took literally half of her teeth were loose, half of them, and she was four years old. So anyway, sorry. Um, I really try not to get into my job in these videos, but I do think this is pretty interesting, and I thought a lot of people had comments that made me think that they wanted to hear more. So um, back to the cat. So we weren't there to do cleanings. They don't need that. They need... Um, fractured infected teeth addressed. So most all of these cats came from situations that they never should have been in the first place. These cats were not bred there. These cats were not um, from wild capture. These were all animals that were either involved in circuses. Uh, one tiger was from a magician show. Most of these cats come from people who think it would be cool to have a tiger as a pet and then realize somewhere along the line this wasn't a good idea or the cat gets seized by the authorities and ends up at this rescue. So their history is completely unknown in most cases. So a lot of these cats come with broken teeth, missing teeth, um, and the job of the rescue, working with the group that I was there volunteering with, is to repair these cats and get them pain-free. These are all geriatric cats. This is basically a retirement home for these cats to live out the rest of their life um, on grass, outside, with a balanced diet. A lot of these cats come from, you know, metal cages, concrete flooring, um, malnourished because it's expensive to feed these cats. Um, anyways, so the first cat that I helped to work on um, was a lion. He was 400 pounds. Can you tell I'm trying to keep it together and be professional? Um, he was amazing. All four of his canine teeth, so the big fang teeth, were broken off. Um, this cat was about 16 or 17 years old, they think. Um, I don't remember where he came from. Most of the time they know the history of where they came from, but some of these cats have been to two or three different places before they get to this rescue, so a lot of their history gets lost. Um, anyways, this cat had all four of his canines basically broken off. So if you can imagine that the part of the canine that you would see, well, one of the tigers had a longer canine than my pinky. So this lion, his canine tooth, the part that you could see was this long. There's as much, if not more, underneath the gum line in the root. This lion's tooth was broken off at about here and open and exposed. The root canal was exposed on all four canine teeth, the ones that are at the front of the mouth. They need those teeth for picking things up, catching prey. Um, anything that comes in their mouth is gonna hit those open root canals. Um, that does not happen in the wild. They don't break all four of their teeth in the wild. He probably broke his teeth being on an enclosure that he wanted out of, trying to get out of it, he broke those, or someone cut them off thinking, oh, if I remove those big fang teeth, he'll be safe. Thank you, humans. Um, so obviously when you cut those teeth off, it's painful. You're exposing the root to everything that cat sees, infection, dirt, debris, um, bedding, the tissue dies off. It, it was disgusting. So it is quicker and safer in these guys to do root canals, not to extract those teeth. In my world, I would just extract them because it would be bigger, it would be easier. But these cats have so much bone around those roots, it would take hours and hours to drill that bone away and get that root out and close that area up. So the goal of this mission is to root canal as many teeth as possible because it's quicker. And once you're done, you're done. There's no chance of infection. The pain is gone. There's no chance that it's going to um, not heal properly because obviously you can't recheck these guys like you do your pets if something goes wrong. 
I don't do root canals. I have seen root canals done before, but it's been 15 years. Um, and so my help in this situation was a little bit limited because I don't, I don't do any root canals, but it was amazing to see because there were four veterinarians and one human dentist working on this cat at the same time to root canal his teeth in less than two hours. So he went from, I don't know how much pain, infection, discomfort, um, to being a happy, somewhat healthy old man cat. So this whole thing was quite rewarding, a little heartbreaking. It was really cool to see all this stuff, but at the same time, it was sad that this kind of a place has to exist. Um, the man has 200 cats in his facility. Some of them are out on tour, um, obviously to help to raise money for the facility. You can take tours and see a lot of the cats, but not all of them are on exhibit because some of them are either ill or aggressive or not socialized and fearful. They don't handle the cats. Um, you cannot go in with any of the cats. The keepers do not go in with the cats to feed and clean. They have a whole system to keep everybody, including the cats, safe. Um, we were allowed to take pictures. I'm not really allowed to show anything. I can't insert video or clips into this video, but I'm gonna sneak a couple because how can I not? Um, just to prove I was there, right? Um, and I also have some photos. Um, so, um, so, for example, there were two teams of us working. So my team was on the lion, and in another room there was a team working on a Bengal tiger. Um, that Bengal tiger was seized when a meth lab was busted. Um, the authorities found a tiger in the meth lab. So most of the animals come from situations like that. Another tiger that we saw on the tour um, was seized. I think he came from Arizona. When child services came into the home, they told, basically told the family, the tiger or the kids, pick which one you want to keep. And that's how EFRC, uh, Exotic Feline Rescue Center, ended up with him. So most of these cats are sold as pets. Um, it doesn't take much to get an exotic license from the USDA. Um, it is not intended to sell lions, tigers, bears, all the other things, but there is a pretty decent loophole that allows people um, to sell these animals and there's just not a whole lot of tracking as to what the people who have licenses are actually selling with those licenses. Okay, so to prove I was there, that is my hand on a tiger paw. Yep. Um, the man who owns this rescue facility is very, very sweet. He knows every single one of those cats and everything about those cats. And he was happy to have us take pictures, but for the respect of the animal, asked that we not post them on social media. Um, and I totally get it. A lot of these are, um, could be disturbing because obviously there's blood involved. Um, a lot of people don't understand the situation and could assume that we are working on pets or causing pain somehow so it's just easier not to show it um but i can't not show you guys um here is let me see what i can show there's a picture of me taking some x-rays i was going to show that because there's really not a whole lot that you can see but mostly just to prove i was there working um Yeah, so this is a picture of me taking x-rays on a black leopard. So a black leopard is the same thing as a panther. You, It's just a leopard, but because everything is black, you can't see the spots unless you're up close. And I was up close. You can see the spots. So that is me taking x-rays of a black leopard. He ended up having to have one root canal and one tooth that needed to be extracted. And so I was able to help um, close up the extraction site. So sew the gums up, basically. Um yeah, so that is the gist of that. So real quick, so one of the things that we got, we got a lot of things for visiting, um, and I'll link the information below in case you want to check out their website. If you live close enough that you want to visit and take a tour, if you want to donate, um, we got uh, one of their calendars. The man who takes, um, Stephen McLeod, their photographer, does amazing things. He His images are amazing. Um, this is Zoe. Um, Zoe was raised in a home, so she thinks she's a pet cat, and as soon as she sees people come to her, she comes right up to the fence, and I have a video of her purring. Um, you can hear her purring quite loudly for about six seconds, and then three different lions throughout the rescue center started meowing, for lack of a better word, to each other, and so the whole video is just the sounds of lions meowing back and forth, roaring really is what they're doing. Um, it was quite awe-inspiring. Um, and then I did donate um, 
some money to them. You can pick which cats you want to donate to if there was a cat that you saw on the exhibit or if you want to donate to the one that needs the most. Um, so this is King. I saw him on exhibit. He um, is about 450 pounds. He came to them declawed. Um, and my comment that I'm going to make has nothing to do with declawing. I don't have I'm not going to express an opinion about declawing because I think every situation is different. However, this is a wild cat and declawing them does not make them any safer. It is also extremely painful for a 400 pound animal to walk on their feet with the first digit missing. So when we declaw cats of all sizes, we don't just cut the nails out. You amputate the first digit of every single toe. I had a cat that was declawed. He came to me declawed, and I'm glad he was because he would have destroyed my house if he hadn't been declawed. Um, I am not saying I am against declawing. In general, there is a place for it. This is not the place. So the tour guide said basically um, he was put on arthritis and pain medication from the day they acquired him because he can't walk very well. And it's quite apparent when you see him walking. Um, I mean, he is old. He's arthritic. So that is, plays into some of it. But you can tell that his feet don't walk properly. This is Spangles. She came to them with a pretty serious eye infection. And the best way to address that was to remove that eye. Um, in veterinary medicine, if you are blind and not painful, you can live a long, happy life. They don't care if they're blind. If you're painful and blind, the eye needs to go. That's the most humane thing. So Miss Spangles in all her glory with one eye, no problem. Um, so I will list their information below in case you want to check it out. I'm not asking for donations, just to check it out. It's pretty amazing, um, the work that they do. And I'll list the organization that I volunteered with um, so you can see that if you're interested too. Some people might be interested in the, the medicine and the science behind it. So that is the end of that. I apologize for the non stitchy stuff, but there were a number of people that seemed interested in it. So that's why I put it here instead of putting it at the end and having people ignore it because I think it's important. Okay, back to stitching stuff. Let me show you the things I acquired this past month, whether purchased or uh, passed. Um, so one thing that was passed to me, Miss Pam at... Pam, why can I never remember your channel name? Stitching Between the Lines. Um, so Pam did this Lantern Lane with everybody else and I did not have any interest in doing this pattern. This is not me. Nope, I don't need to do it. I'll never be able to keep up with the Sal. So I just didn't do it. Everybody's seen it. I'm just going to show it because I fell in love with this because Pam kept showing these wonderful pictures of all the reds. Red's my favorite color. The reds in hers were super rich and she said she just used the silk. So I don't think she changed anything. No, she used the Belle Swass silk. Um, but I started thinking, so this is what's not me. All of this, the letters. I don't get this whole urn with flowers motif in it. I know it's very popular. I'm not really criticizing it. I just don't get it and it's not my thing. So what I'm going to do is basically, no. I am basically going to only stitch this part. I'm gonna put that big tree on the opposite side, I think. I might not, I might just put a couple small trees, like pull that tree and put it over here. And then reconfigure that border at the top so that it is centered. How's that? Um, so anyway, so I had commented on this and I said to Pam, I was like, you know, I wasn't gonna do it, but I really think that I need to put it on my list for 2018. And she said, have you already purchased it? No, I had not already purchased it. So she sent it to me, she passed her stash. She also passed me the um, silks that she had left. Um, this is the fabulous red. This is Sister Scarlet by Belle Swa, which is now part of or owned by Classic Color Works. I don't understand the how that happened, but this is Classic Color Works, but it's not cotton, it's silk. Um, so these are the other colors she sent what she had left. Um, yeah, I'm really super excited about that. I might, I might change the green because it looks pretty green in this pattern. And if this is the green that she sent that was left, weathered vine, maybe it's not as bad. I don't know, we'll have to see when I stitch it and when I pick the fabric. But sometime next year, this is what I plan on doing, but cutting almost half of it out. Okay, so thank you, Pam. 
Pam finished her um, Ebenezer's Christmas. She was the first one in the stitch along that um, that finished it. Kathy or Kathleen from Kathleen's Cotton Trail is doing it, and Marlene from Stitching by the Lake is also doing it. I don't know if anybody else is. They haven't attached their pictures um, to the hashtag. But there's still time to start. There's always time to start. I also received um, this from, oh, this is from Pam at Just Keep Stitching. She got this at a Mo's sale and um, gifted it to me because it is uh, quite the Ohio State University Buckeye colors. Um, that is all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to be a good sport. Um, I received, I don't know how I got so lucky to get on Lolly's uh, postcard list, but I got a postcard from Lolly when she was in the States um, from Orlando. So thank you, Lolly, for doing that. Um, she is Lollipop Stitches here and I believe on Instagram, so I will link her below. Um, the lovely and fabulous Sylvia from Becky's Land sent me a wonderful little card. And um, she knows that I love Christine Dahlbeck. I have loved her bef patterns before I knew who she was. And then watching Sylvia's videos found out that this designer of cute little animals that I loved um, now had a name and I could figure out where to get them. Um, when I searched some of the sites, they were all European sites to get her patterns and books. And the shipping was quite high, I thought, but I don't know if I was searching the right thing because, well, I'll get to that later. So Sylvia sent me this by Christine Dahlbeck. This is one of her new um, patterns for this year, Cute Little Winter Owls. I don't know what this is called because I, this is not the name of it. Ugh, with the glare. Why can't I not remember to take these things out? Um, so anyways, so she sent me this pattern and I went to the website that's listed on this pattern and there are a number of her actual hardcover books and the shipping is not that expensive. I don't know what I was thinking. The one site that I checked, I thought the shipping was as much as the book was going to be. So anyways, I, this is not the name of the pattern. Is that German for cross stitch, Sylvia? Um, so she sent me that. Those little guys are cute. She also sent me this um, Alyssa pattern because she knows I love hedgehogs. And then she sent me another hedgehog pattern, but I can't show it because it's just the pattern. Um, so thank you, Sylvia, for that. That was fun to receive a package from Germany. Um, I also had communicated with um, Stephanie. She is one to stitch a few on Instagram um, because... I don't know if it was her or somebody else had posted um, this really cool Halloween kind of Victorian house. And I had commented on how great it was and I had never seen it before and I was going to have to look for it. And then promptly found out that it is out of print. So this is Judith M. Kirby's Victorian's house number nine. I like it. It goes along with my whole I don't stitch Halloween. No, I stitch Halloween. Um, so anyways, at some point, Stephanie and I had communicated and, and I, I'm pretty sure I must have commented on somebody else's because I thought her message to me was, I'm almost done with mine. You can have it when I'm finished. So she was kind enough to pass her stash. There's a cute little card that she sent. This pattern is really cool. I'm not going to show the pattern, but it comes, it folds out and it comes with this card that has the threads on it, but also has room for you to thread your floss through and keep it all together with the pattern. So that was really cool. I really like the um, Christmas one. It's called Win Midwinter Moonlight. It's Victoria number three. I like that one too. There's four, There's more than four. I don't know if they're all seasonal, but um, yeah, so I have that. And then Drew of Weasley Studios posted on his Instagram that he was doing this freebie by Stone Street Stitchworks that I really liked. Um, it was a freebie on their Facebook page, and we all know I'm not on Facebook. So I messaged him and said, hey, can you hook me up with that free pattern um, when you're done? Because I'm not on Facebook. And before he could respond, yes... Um, the creator of Stone Street Stitchworks messaged me on Instagram and said, send me your email and I will send you a link. Um, so thank you very much for that. I will list that information below. Um, this um, is the freebie. Super, super cute. Um, and I also received this. There was a couple freebies that were sent because um, there's a couple on Facebook. This is the one that I um, thought I would like to do. So a good night. So those are available on the Facebook page. And 
I'm gonna pause this for a second because my dog wants outside and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, that leads me to my other sort of not stitch related thing, although it kind of is. So in my last video, I was complaining about how difficult the whole new laptop, no YouTube editor nonsense was, um, and how Michelle from Mitch Stitch had offered to help me. And I jokingly said, that'd be great, except I live in Ohio and she lives in Australia. And she messaged me and she was like, uh, we could video conference about that. And I was like, yeah, I know, but that also involves technology. Um, so anyways, she sent me this link to um, video conference with her and she walked me through the steps of editing just brief edits um, through iMovie. Um, she actually videoed part of our conversation and put it at the end of one of her videos, so that was fun. Um, it's not very funny. I mean, we talked for like 45 minutes, but she only uh, added the parts where she was explaining the editing. Um, and I'm all serious and taking notes and following along, so um, it's not that entertaining. Um, we should have videoed our conversation because she was explaining all the Australian differences and why floss is so expensive there and well, at least her opinion as to why it's so expensive there. Um, anyway, so we will see how successful her uh, video chat tutorial was because I'm going to have to edit these two together because when I paused it, it stopped and I had to save it because I was afraid if I just started again, it would video over. So we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so that is all of the stuff I received from others. These are the things that I purchased. So I got this little needle minder from Down Sunshine Lane. Cute little cardinal. Tis the season for cardinals. I need to get my bird feeder filled up. Um, I usually have about six to eight um, male cardinals and a bunch of females um, throughout the winter if I keep my bird feeder full. Um, I also purchased this new one from Foxwood Crossings. This is more sleds and, of course, cardinals. Super, super cute. It's called Snowy Visitors. Um, hands on design, um, re-released re this. I guess the three of these or two of these or something was in a just cross stitch. Um, just check. A number of years ago and she released it as a pattern. Super, super cute. I'm not really a blue person. I feel like I wanna change the colors of that, but then I feel like it changes the whole scheme and I'm kind of a purist. I don't really do well with changing colors. It's just easier to follow the pattern. So I don't know, we'll see. You saw how much drama there was about changing two to three colors on the Ebenezer's Christmas. God forbid I have to change all these colors. So that's that. I was on Hirschner's for another reason. They have a whole line of puzzles. I was buying puzzles for some family members for Christmas. And with the free shipping and the sale, this thing was five bucks. Um, this is a current one. This is a Cross Stitch Christmas. I think it's 2015. I think I looked at it. There's lots of Stitcherovia stuff in here. Yeah, 2015. Um, so that Stitcherovia is in there. Um, this Stitcherovia, I'm getting better, is in there. Um, there's some cute ones. I'll do a quick flip through. Um, the one that I really want to do is this one. I think he's really cute and I love his little reindeer. Does he have a little cardinal in his tree? No, his nest is empty. Yeah, so that one's cute. Um, here's some more back here. This one with all the Santas. Those are, yeah, all the Santas are cute. It's a little bit busy, but it's cute. Um, let's see, I'll just try and do a quick flip through. There is this little reindeer. You don't have to make it into a pillow. Joy we showed. The thing I don't, oh, here we go. So this is a Barbara Anna. I thought this was a Barbara Anna. It looks like hers. That's cute. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. So that's a Barbara Anna. Some cute little ornaments. That one's cute, a little sampler. Kind of blocky, so it probably would go pretty quickly. Said the girl who thought she could stitch Ebenezer's Christmas in less than a month. Okay, what's the next section? The next section is Cool Yule, so it's blues and greens, which is not really my style. 
Um, like I said, this book was five bucks on Hirschner's. I, they still had some, so if you see something that you want, these are pretty, even though I don't really care for the colors, so you could easily change them. That one would be pretty as a red Christmas ball. And there's that. That one's kind of cute. Again, I would want to change a lot of that to red. What else? Cool. Okay, the next section is by the with care, so um, lots of black. These are cute. That one's pretty. You do that in all kinds of different colors, but it is pretty with those. Toppers to make some pet ornaments, or pet stockings. Another stocking there. And then the last section is, oh no, maybe that's not the last section. These are cute little ornaments. They're supposed to look like um, Christmas cookies. A little gingerbread house. This is a Stitcherobia and the Congdon. Cute. And then these little cards, which you could do anything with, with them. You don't have to do cards, I guess. Okay, and then the last section is where that Santa was. So then there's these Santas. That guy. That's a Joan Elliott. That Santa's a Joan Elliott. Um, I showed that one already. Those little stand-up guys. Looks like they've done like that fuzzy floss, what's it called? To make it look like they have fur on their coats. And that's it, right? Yeah. So that's that book, five bucks on Hirschner's. I think that was part of my holiday online shopping madness. Okay, and the last thing, I bought this in July, but finally received it in November. This is my Picture This Plus order, and for those of you that haven't heard, they are no longer going to do the Christmas in July sale. So there's that. Um, so this is 32 count gingerbread, and I've got all the lights on in my kitchen. I've got all the windows open because the sun is out, even though it's super early this morning. Um, so these should be pretty accurate. So that's gingerbread. I wish I'd gotten that opalescent. This is Lugana gingerbread that I purchased a while ago and it's opalescent. I just don't like the difference of how Lugana takes the dye versus linen. I'll still use it. I don't know if you can tell it it's opalescent. Nope, you sure can't. But that's Lugana and this is or this is Lugana and this is linen. Both the same thing. Um, I got conifer. I thought this would be pretty for Christmas stuff. I saw somebody on Instagram who did a Christmas pattern that was like um, snowmen. Most snowmen are done on the blue background, and I just don't care for all that blue. Every once in a while is okay, but they did it on green. And I thought, well, that's a good idea to try and find some patterns that would translate to green background instead of blue. So this is conifer. That's really pretty. This one is Alchemy. It's I wanted something gray. I cannot find the perfect gray pattern, although I think perfect gray fabric. Although I think I may have found it. Um, I have a piece called Pewter from the, this picture, this plus, that's pretty gray. And I just ordered a piece um, from Xdu Design. I had a small piece that I showed in one of my previous videos called Vintage Look, and I'm thinking that that's going to be as perfect as I can get. This was listed as gray toned on the website. Somebody else bought this, and theirs was pretty gray. This is Alchemy. Mine's pretty blue. I don't know if that is coming up as blue. Hmm. Anyways, I bought a huge piece of it because I was going to use this for that Nora Corbett sleigh that I had that the reindeer go with. It is not going to work on this. So, I don't know what I'll use this for, but it's a pretty big piece, so I'm going to have to figure something out. Um, this is Oaken, 32 count Oaken. This is one of their new colors. I love this color. 
It's just a really nice brown. It's different than the brown that's in doubloon. Doubloon's more orange. This is definitely brown. Very pretty. Um, oh, speaking of doubloon, this is doubloon. This is 36 count doubloon. I got a big piece of this because I love it. So see the difference. Oaken, doubloon is the big piece. This one is oaken. And this is showing up a little bit darker, I think, than it really is. The modeling seems really splotchy on the video. Still really pretty. And then I got more Legacy. I got 32 and 36 count Legacy. I do like using uh, one over two on 36 count. So since I like Legacy so much, I got them in both sizes. Um, and so this really demonstrates the green versus the brown. So this is the 30, and I don't think this is because the fabrics are different sizes. I really don't think that that's the case. This is the 32 count. This is the 36 count right here. See how green it is compared to this? I don't like the green. And especially compared to Ebenezer's Christmas, this is 32. This is 32. See, that looks really green too. Up against this one, even though it's really not that green. This is 36. All legacy. So I think in the future, if I'm going to get legacy, I'm going to have to get it from my LNS so I can actually see it. I'll still use it. I'm just going to have to find the right pattern. I just look how green. Green, green, green. Okay. So. I don't even know how long I talked in my other, that first part of that video. I'm at 12 minutes right now. Um, let me, okay, I have two things. I was going to show a preliminary pile of what I plan on doing at the Stitch Away retreat, which I probably should do because this is probably the last time I'm going to talk about the retreat. <laughs> probably not. Um, before the retreat because we are about six weeks out from my LNS's retreat uh, called Stitch Away. So this is last call. If you guys are interested, um, there is still space available. It is January 10th, which is a Wednesday uh, through that Sunday. It's always the week slash weekend before Martin Luther King. It's at Houston Woods State Park um, near Oxford, Ohio. Rumor has it Felicity Stitches is coming down from Cleveland. Excited about that. I don't know who else is coming. There was um, some back and forth from some other floss tubers, but I don't know how many other people are coming. Um, I will obviously be there. Pam and Steph from Stitch, Just Keep Stitching will be there. I tried to get Pam uh, Stitching Between the Lines to come, but she's going to be in uh, Florida in January in her house. So why would you leave Florida in January to come to the middle of nowhere, Ohio, in January? Um, I tried to get, actually, Farm Girl was going to come. Um, I was actually going to break my rule and share a room with her, but she's going to Hawaii with her family. Not in January, I don't know when she's going, but obviously that takes priority, which I get. So anyways, I will go ahead, this isn't working. I will go ahead and show what I preliminarily have planned for Situa, although their things are always subject to change. So quickly talking about Situa in case you are interested. Um, this retreat is a lot different from the Minnesota retreat in that the we don't have a location in this area that's similar to what the Minnesota retreat had, meaning like a conference center where all the food's included um, and the cost of staying. So there is a restaurant, a full restaurant in the State Park Lodge. There are restaurants very close because it's um, close to Miami University. Um, they do discount the rooms, but it still is going to be um, not as cost effective as the Minnesota retreat was, depending on how many days you go. The one thing I will say is that it does start on Wednesday and goes through Sunday morning, and you can come or go as many days as you want. Um, most people come up Thursday night or Friday. Some of us go on Wednesday just because it's nice to get your spot claimed, get all settled and checked in, so you have Thursday as a full day. So. 
Um, it does end up being um, a little bit more expensive, but there are more days involved. Your food is separate. However, all the rooms have a mini fridge, so you can bring food. Um, one year that I was there, ladies made food in crock pots and had just a big like buffet food for dinner one night. So you can make it more affordable, um, especially if you double up um, in your room. So um, the, it's a state park. Um, it is not a fancy, fancy hotel. The rooms are clean. The rooms are nice. Um, it's a little bit older, so it's a little bit rustic, um, but it's a lot of fun. There's um, a bar in the lodge if you want to drink. Um, it is very laid back. There's no classes. There's no pressure. There's no schedule, really. There's a couple things. There's a buffet, like a formal buffet dinner one night if you want to attend that. There's a tea that Barbara puts on for new people every year just to kind of talk about how Stitchaway Away got started and the history of the retreat. Um, we have a, what is it called? Show and tell one night where you can display all your pieces. And if you want to talk about your piece, you can get up and talk about it. Um, last year, Sue Hillis, who is a local designer to us, was at the retreat. And so she talked about just the process of how she got into cross-stitch designing, um, how things have changed in the decades that she's been a designer. Um, she did questions and answers, which was really cool. So um, I did a very quick video from last year's retreat. I was very new to floss tube. I was kind of nervous about filming. I didn't want to film a bunch of people if they didn't want to be involved. Um, but I did kind of get the gist of uh, a guest room, the stitching lodge, the room that we all stitch in, the annex that Barbara sets up. So she has a, a small room near the stitching room where she brings um, tons of trunk shows, as much fabric as she can carry um, to sell um, to people who don't have access to an LNS or a lot of the trunk shows are things that aren't available yet or are limited availability yet. Um, so that's always fun. But it's pretty laid back. If you want to stitch with everybody, you can. If you want to stitch in the lodge where it's more quiet, if you want to stitch in your room, um, it's very laid back. Um, so I will put keepsakes information below if you are interested. Like I said, there are still spaces available. Um, and Steph from Just Keep Stitching has been working on the keepsakes Facebook page because I didn't really have much of a Facebook presence. Um, that has a lot of information about re the retreat on there. I don't know if it has any pictures. Um, but like I said, I did a video very, um, at the very beginning of when I first started filming these, I did a Situé because I filmed my first video, um, weeks before I went to Situé last year, which also I need to make a note is almost my one year floss of tubery. Um, okay. So come to retreat. If you've never been to a retreat, you should go to one. Um, when I went to this, I didn't know anybody except Barbara and Lynn from the shop. Um, and now I, I have a group of um, ladies that I really enjoy seeing and hanging out with um, that I don't get to see very often. Um, and so I look forward to it for many reasons. One, it's just four straight days of not being interrupted to do anything life related except cross stitch. Um, and you feel like you're away. It's 45 minutes from my house, but you feel like you're away because you're in this lodge in the winter and you feel like you're trapped. The first year I went, it snowed. And so you felt like you were snowed in, even though we weren't. Um, yeah. So anyway, so I, in my last video, I said I thought I was going to do all Halloween at the retreat because I'm not a Halloween stitcher. I don't have very many Halloween patterns. And then I went through all my Halloween patterns and apparently I have quite a few. So these are the patterns that I've kind of pulled out to take to retreat and work on in retreat. Things might change um, just because there's so much stuff that I want to stitch in my stash. And I did quite a bit of shopping the past week. Um, nothing has arrived yet, so it doesn't count. Um, I need to stop. Okay, so this is what I pull out of my stash. There are more Halloween patterns that I'm not taking. I'm not going to take 50 patterns. I probably already have too many things here, but we'll see. So this is the Littles by Bent Creek, little itty bitty kitty. Surely I can get that done in four days, right? Right. It's tiny. It's, it's tiny. Stitch count is 24 by 24. Come on, I can do that. Um, so this is Rivaris. Um, her patterns don't have a name, but this one's really cool. I am pretty sure I'm not going to stitch the alphabet. I'm just going to stitch the center. Uh, everything but the alphabet, I guess is what I should say. And I think I'm either going to do that on 
this piece of doubloon because it's kind of stitched on a um, kind of a parchment looking paper in the picture, which by the way, this is an actual photo. Um, the pattern is huge. If you've never stitched a Rivars pattern before, um, they're out of Italy. This is an actual photo, glossy photo. And then I'm going to show this because it's huge and you're not going to be able to copy anything from it. But this is just one page of it. So simple, it's all one color, only one symbol. So either doubloon or I bought this a while ago from Chromatic Alchemy and it wasn't as fabulous as I thought it was going to be. I really like it. It's just, I don't know what I thought it was going to be. However, it is opalescent. It's called Dune and it's opalescent and you can't tell. It kind of has a little bit of a, I don't know, the lighter part, this background and this, it kind of looks like it has a blue haze. This is doubloon. It's not very dissimilar. It just has a lighter background, I guess. Um, and I would stitch it with some kind of a black. I don't know if I'm going to use 310. Um, or is it carriage house black? Carriage black? Hand dyed floss. It has kind of a gray kind of effect to it. Anyway, so I don't know which one I'm going to do. I haven't made all those final preparations yet. I'm getting close to finalizing things, but there's time. Okay. So that's the second one I want to take. The third one that I definitely want to do, because this was gifted to me by Jen from Jen Stitching Niche, and it is niche. She explained why it's niche and not niche. It has something to do with um, like a scientific background, um, kind of like your habitat, is your niche. Anyways, um, she gifted this to me. It's not available because it's from the Stitchy Box subscription. Um, and I've got the purple fabric from, um, hand-dyed fabrics by Stephanie. It's dusty purple. This one's tiny too. It is 62 by 57. So I really want to get this done. It's not specifically Halloween, but I feel like because this was gifted to me, this was the first thing I got as a past the stash this year. I feel like I, I should do it and I really like it. Um, so I'm going to for sure do that. <clears throat> this one I got this year. I don't know that I need to do it. I think if I'm going to leave any behind, it's going to be this one. Not because I don't like it, but because I have plenty of time to do that. Um, I've got the fabrics. I've got the, um, I mean, I've got the flosses and the fabric. This is 36 count because I don't think 32 was available. Tin roof. Yeah, it's supposed to be on 32 count, but 32 count wasn't available. So I got 36 count, which is fine. It's not as, um, it's greener than the tin roof I've stitched on before. I love tin roof. I've worked on it a number of times before and I really like it, but this one's greener. I don't know if you can see. It looks really green to me. So we'll see. If any of them are going to stay behind or be replaced, it's going to be that one because I have so many more that are true Halloween. Um, and this one is just more fall. And I do want to get some Halloween ones. This one for sure I want to start because I've had this kitted up fabric flosses. Um, forever. This is Primitive Hairs Trick or Treat Pumpkin. Super, super, super cute. And I bought her fabric. This is Old Salem Linen. And I just never used it. So this is the fabric that she used. I believe she coffee dyes it. Yeah, it smells like coffee. But it's Italian coffee. Um, so that's the fabric I'm going to use because that's what I bought it for and I have all the flosses for that. She uses, yeah, Carriage Black um, is the black that's called for and it, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell in this. Oh, the thing I don't like about that coffee fabric is that there's like coffee all over it. So now I have this gritty stuff on my hands. But see this kind of like grayish black here? That's Carriage Black. This part of the hat is 310. Can you tell? I really like carriage black. I wanted to use that in Ebenezer's Christmas, but it was just a little bit too much gray um, in the horse. And it really looks much better with that bright black on those other muted colors. So um, I bought a bunch of carriage black thread last week um, at my LNS because I want to use it for this and possibly um, that Rivaris piece. Oh, I don't like this gritty feel on this fabric. I love the fabric. I don't like the coffee feel. And I can't wash it. I have to wear gloves. Take exam gloves with me to situate. Ah, and now there's coffee on everything else. 
Okay, the last thing I have in my stash is, or no, in my pile for what I'm gonna take to retreat has nothing to do with Halloween, but I've had this all year and I love it. And since I'm gonna be in the middle of nowhere, hopefully it will snow. I felt like I should have a wintry piece. And how stinking cute is that little cat? <gasps> um, not all of this is stitched, so obviously you stitch it on white fabric, but most of this is stitched here, and I don't really see that there's much stitching up in here. So this would go pretty quickly as well, and I feel like it's pretty fitting for something to stitch in January. So I kind of feel like I should start all these things so that I'm not starting anything brand new when I go to stitch away, but that all is going to depend on how fast I can get Ebenezer done. I think this might be my January 1st start. I always try and start something new on January 1st. I know that's not a, a new to me tradition or new to you because of me tradition. Um, but I think this might be the one because I really do want to work on this one. This one for sure is going. Um, it's just a matter of how many of these I can actually spend time on. So I'm going to go up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I'll have well, Wednesday, you can't check in until middle of the afternoon, so I probably won't go up till middle of the afternoon. So I'll have all day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, half a day Wednesday. Sunday is kind of a pack up, get your final project um, gift, and, and everybody kind of leaves. Nobody really stays to stitch. Um, that's one thing I didn't mention. Barbara, um, her husband Joe are really own keepsakes, and they're really good about the free things that we get at retreat. So in my last video, I showed... Um, or not my last video, my retreat video, I showed that Sue Hillis designed a pattern that hadn't been released yet. She tweaked it a little bit to make it um, unique to keepsakes, our LNS, and we got it free well before it was released to the public. Um, and then um, the pattern was framed in a tray, so like a display tray. And so Joe, Barbara's husband, built the frames for everybody who went to retreat, and I think there were 80 or 85 people, so we all got free trays to put that piece in if we choose to. Um, and then we also got a couple other free patterns. Because the tray was such a significant gift, we didn't get as many free patterns as the year before, but the year before that I went, I think I probably got eight free patterns. All those patriotic pieces that I showed at the, my very first video, all those patriotic things that I showed were all freebies from retreat, and I didn't stitch all of the patterns that we got. I think I stitched six of them, five of them. Yeah, so there's always a theme. Um, last year's theme had kind of a French feel to it. The year before was patriotic, and the year before that was friendship, I think, or tea. I, I couldn't go the whole time the first year because of work. So I didn't get involved in all the things, and I don't remember what the theme was, unfortunately. But there's a theme. There's a bunch of free stuff every night. One one night we got um, a needle minder, a pattern, the fabric for the pattern. Um, so it's it's worth it. Um, I think it's worth the money. Um, anyways, so I'll put all that information below. The last thing I'm going to do, how long are we at here? 28 minutes. Oh, lordy. Okay, real quick. So last night I watched Cindy from Cindy's Cross Stitch. She did a Christmas ornament parade. Um, and I loved that video, every single thing. And so I left her a message and I said, you have inspired me to um, show my ornaments. And I love how you keep them when you're not having them on your tree. She keeps them in those decorative boxes that you can use as like gift boxes, but she stores them in there. And then after she hangs them on the tree, she just puts the empty boxes underneath the tree because it looks like presents. So I said, you have inspired me to get those boxes and use those boxes and show my ornaments. Well, I think inspired is probably um, a bit of a stretch because I'm just stealing the idea. I'm just flat out stealing the idea. So I have nowhere near the amount of ornaments that she has, and I think I'm missing some because I feel like I have more than what I have here, but I'm gonna show you the ornaments that I've stitched and either finished or had finished. So the first one that I ever finished on my own, this is a Little House Needleworks pattern, and this is before I knew about, this is how I found Vanna on her blog years and years and years ago, before she was ever on Floss Tube, was from this pattern. And I was like, oh, I can do that. I can buy cording and hot glue it. Yeah, look at it. I don't know how to do bows or anything to finish this off. So I've got this crazy little, like you can tell where I glued it. Like, honestly, I don't know if you can see it from there. You can see the hot glue. <laughs> 
So when I stick this on my tree, I just kind of stick it back far in the branches so you can't, like it just lays like this so you can't really see this. Maybe one day I'll send it to Vana and she can finish it. I mean, I literally did all this too. I don't know what I put it on. It doesn't feel like, I mean, I glued it. I just folded it over and glued it. It's not on foam core or anything. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it this way because it's my first ever finish attempt. And now I just send everything to Vana because this is what you get. So from there, my next one, so I did these the same year. I stitched this. I love this. This is from a Just Cross Stitch ornament issue. And this I actually did finish myself. My stepmom helped me sew it, but my corners are kind of bleh. I don't even know if you can call those rounded. They're like squared off. Not so bad there. Um, but I put the little hanger in. I was super, super proud of that one. It's really cute. And he was quick to stitch. That same year, I also stitched this one. This is from the same Just Cross Stitch ornament issue. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And I tried to finish this in an oval pillow. <laughs> it was a nightmare. It was uneven. I couldn't get it to close. I don't even think I ever completely finished it. So I sent it to Vana last year with other things and I said, if there's any way that you can salvage this, I would love, actually, I think I restitched it because I had cut the fabric so close that you, there's no way that you could wrap it around anything. You'd have to glue it. And I didn't have enough fabric to sew it all the way closed. Yeah, I, I restitched this. So I restitched it and sent it to Vana. Although I think that Vana's skills, she probably could have redone it, but I didn't, I didn't make her do that. So Vana finished this with some fabric that I sent her. Adorable. And then my last, I finished on my own. This is from the Just Cross Stitch ornament. And then I also purchased the pattern. Um, there's a whole series of these little ornaments with baby animals. And I did the fox for my sister. And I did a squirrel for my mom. And finished it into a little t um, tart tin. And I actually did, like, you know, lace it all up and cinch it in the back. And there's a piece of styrofoam in here that I glued it to to make it pop. Um, and then my boyfriend drilled the hole in the thing so I could hang it. And of course he like MacGyvered it so that, cause it kept learning to tilt. So I don't know, really know what he did to make it hang straight when I hang it on the tree. But he of course takes credit for all of this because he drilled this hole and did whatever he did with this. So he takes credit for the entire thing times three, cause I made three of them. Um, I love this. It is a lot of work. I, the back stitching. Because I'm so much a purist and I want to follow every single line, I'm just not good at this kind of stuff because you kind of have to fudge it. It's a circle. It's not going to fit the same pattern. I did it on linen, so it's not going to be straight. But they're so stinking cute. So I did that, and then I said, that's it. There's no reason for me to ever finish anything because there are people who I will pay gladly to finish. So Vana finished this for me. This is from The Little Stitcher on Etsy. She is an Italian designer. Um, and I love this. This is packed so tight. Vana packed so much stuff in here. I love it. And then um, I usually send some fabrics with my pieces and say, if you think that it'll work, great. If you have better ideas, send it to me because you are the master. Um, and I'm always pleased with myself when Vana uses what I send because, well, I don't know that she necessarily thinks it's a great idea, but she's at least polite enough to say, sure, I'll use what you want. Um, she also did this one. Actually, I'm not sure Vana did this one. I think Faye, the Carolina Stitcher, did this one. I think she did this one. This is from um, the Just Cross Stitch. I, I, I could find which ones these are from. I just don't know. I don't have anything written down, so I apologize. But I love these little guys. And instead of the French knots, I did little beads. Oh, they're so stinking cute. Um, I'm almost positive that this was Faye, Carolina Stitcher. She finished this for me, and it's super cute. Super, super cute. She also, I know for sure she did this one. Um, so this is from uh, Just Cross Stitch Ornament Issue. I did two of these that year and, and gave one to my mom. Um, and I asked her if she could kind of finish it just like it was in the magazine with this little wire hanger. But she added a fun little twist because the back has a pocket. So if you wanted to put like a little gift card or a little message card in there, you could. Um, I just hang it on my tree, so I don't have anything in it other than the paper that she sent. Um, but she did a really sweet little job. Um, and her finishing is, is very sweet. Um, she does a lot more primitive type finishes, which 
aren't exactly my style. This one that she did, I'm almost positive she did this one because there's a charm on it and that's that's kind of her like little signature. She puts charms on everything. I sent her this fabric. Um, this isn't normally her style. Um, but I thought it was cute with just those little silly birds. So this is much more her style. This, you know, color pattern and palette and, and style, which is fine. It's just not how I want everything finished because you can tell a lot of my stuff is really colorful. Um, okay, and the last one I have, I know I'm missing some. This, a friend of mine gifted to me this pattern. Um, this is a JBW design and it was done. Um, they did it over two and also over one and the over one is really cute. I think this is simple enough. I could probably do that without pulling my hair out. Um, but Vonna finished it um, in the little mitten shape as called for in the pattern. Okay, that's all I got. Oh, no, this one. This is a, this is a um, I got this on Etsy. It's more needlepoint because it's just, well, one, it's not DMC. It's more of a yarn. And it's just half stitches. It was cute. It was stitched on one of those little wooden, um, what are they called? It's wood. But the kit came with all the floss, wool, whatever, and the wood piece and the backing felt. So he's cute. She has some other ones. They're really cute, but needlepoint's expensive. Okay. If I come across more ornaments as I'm decorating my tree this year, I will be sure to show them, but that is what I have right now. I think that is everything I wanted to talk about. Let me look at my list real quick. Yeah, that's it. So, Michelle, I'm going to hopefully edit these two videos together, maybe put a fun little like beginning trailer. I don't know. We'll see. That's all I got. So, hope everybody in the States had a happy Thanksgiving. I don't know that I'll be back before Christmas just because of the timing of when I do my videos and I'm not planning on having a whole lot of stuff. Well, I shouldn't say that. I was gonna say I'm not having, I'm ha planning on having a lot of stuff to show, but who knows? Maybe I'll have a lot more time to stitch than I think. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, thank you so much for all your comments. Um, and subscriptions. I really appreciate everything. I feel like I'm, I don't know, I feel like I should be ending this in a much bigger fashion. Um, but thanks to everybody who watches and likes and subscribes and leaves comments. Um, we have all said before that's why we do it. Otherwise I would just be sitting here talking to myself in my kitchen. Um, so without people who watch, um, there'd be no point in doing this. So thanks so much. Have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Bye. You guys, I totally forgot to show you what I got back from my framer. I don't know how I forgot that because I was so super excited about it. This is Bird Study by Kathy Barrick. I stitched this on 36 count vintage autumn gold by Lakeside Linens, uh, one over two. I love it. I posted a picture of it on Instagram, but the fabric looked really, really orange because I did it at night with bad lighting. Ooh, can you guys see that? This frame looks so cool. And this is just another example of, I always go in with an idea of what kind of frame I want. And Barbara goes, how about this? And I'm like, nah, let me keep looking. And then she'll say, how about this? Nah. Let me keep looking. And I'll try like six or eight frames. And I almost always come back to one of the first ones that Barbara suggests. So this was not the first one that, she, oh, that's better. This was not the first one that she suggested, but it was pretty close. Um, and not only does it look pretty cool with this um, dark kind of outline, but my house, my living room is kind of these kind of neutral um, colors, grays, whites, browns. So it really, really goes with my house, um, which Barbara has never been here, so she doesn't know that. I can't get it straight, I can't get the glare out, I can't get it centered. Ooh. So there it is. Bird study by Kathy Barrick. I will stick this in somewhere in the middle of the video or maybe at the end. I swear that's it. Bye.